But first, with the parliament now over for the winter break, the PM's signature poli policy, his Indigenous voice to everyone and everything, well, it's in big trouble and he knows it. The basic difficulty is it offends against Bob Hawke's 1988 Australia Day speech declaration that here in Australia, said Hawke, we have no hierarchy of descent. We have no privilege of origin. Now, I'll repeat that again. No hierarchy of descent, no privilege of origin. Bob Hawke. And the voice, well, it embodies both. This week, the Prime Minister has switched into damage control. Repeatedly, including in the Parliament today, he's tried to insist that the voice will only be able to make representations to the Parliament and executive on matters re relating directly to Aboriginal people or issues that impact them differently to everyone else. Now, this is based, of course, on the Attorney General's second reading speech, which says, and I'll quote again, matters relating to Indigenous people that would include matters specific to them and matters relevant to the Australian community, but which affect Indigenous people differently. Now, note that term would include, because it would include those specific matters, but that doesn't mean it would exclude other matters. So this is the fig leaf the PM's now relying on to retrofit his Referendum Act just a few days after it's passed the Parliament. The plain words of the proposed amendment give the voice a constitutionally guaranteed right to make representations to the Parliament and Executive on, quote, matters relating to Indigenous people. That's what the referendum says, black and white, not the words Mark Dreyfus has used in a second reading speech to try and make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And as the PM must know, the plain wording of the Constitution, the exact words that go in, well, they trump any legislation that gets passed down the track, let alone any utterances in a second reading speech. Expert after expert has said today on this that the Prime Minister is just wrong. Sydney University constitutional lawyer Professor Anne Toomey, a voice supporter I might add, said that the PM was correct to say the High Court could take into account the attorney's speech, but that it was impossible to say definitively how the court would interpret the wording. Quote, says Professor Toomey, it will look at the second reading speech, but it's not conclusive. Another pro-voice expert, Professor George Williams, said the voice would have, quote, a broad remit to make decisions. Of course it will, because if it gets up, that's the whole point of it. What did the voice activist, Professor Marsha Langton, say? People who are opposing the voice referendum, she said, are saying that we are destroying the fabric of their sacred constitution. That's right. Yes, that's right. That's exactly what we're doing. Then there was the Indigenous Affairs Minister, Linda Burney. Well, she's been under pressure all week over her claims that The Voice would not be able to recommend the abolition of Australia Day. Well, now she's quoting that The Voice will not be required to make a representation on every law, policy or program. Now, sure, it won't be required to do that, but it will be able to do that because that's the power that Labor's amendment gives The Voice. And no Labor government is going to ignore the voice or any representation from it because the PM said that at the outset last year at Gama. Don't forget, a, a brave government, only a brave government, he said, would ignore the voice. Now, for months, the PM's tried to pretend that the voice is no more than just being polite and gracious to Aboriginal people. And yet, as the last couple of weeks have shown you, it's now a legal quagmire, a political mess. Our own Dennis Shanahan said today that the government's legal defence looks thin and under pressure. Now, it'll be interesting to see the next round of polling because on something as important to our national unity as this, it would be reckless in the extreme of any Prime Minister to put up a referendum that was doomed to fail. Today, Peter Dutton advised the PM, call it off, he said. If you think this is going to go down, you've got a duty to call it off. I'll leave the last word now to the opposition leader. Well, today, the forefathers put together the constitution, the, the nation's rule book, uh, which has given us uh, peace and security. People fought in uniform for this country uh, to say that they don't deserve to live here or that they should be paying rent. 
uh, is a disgrace and, and they should be called out for it. And that radical element is a very small part of the population, but it's being heard because of social media. And as I say, that a lot of Australians just want to get on with their lives. Frankly, I think the Prime Minister is at a point where if he realises that the voice is going down, and that's what all of the polling is indicating at the moment, then he should make it a decision that's in our country's best interest and say, look, you know, I'm going to call it off because it's just going to divide the country down the middle. It's not going to achieve the outcome that we're talking about. And there are other ways that we can provide practical mm. uh, support and consideration to Indigenous Australians.